Hi everybody, in this video we're going to look at how to create a pivot table. If you've never used pivot tables, if you don't even know what a pivot table is, or you've certainly never created one on your own, I'm going to attempt to show you how to create your first pivot table in less than five minutes. They're actually pretty easy uh, once you start to use them. There's a couple of details that um, once you kind of, once they kind of click, you just get it. Uh, I know at first it seems like something that's very technical, but it's really not as technical as you might think. So what we've got here is a simple data set where we've got some sales data and we've got uh, quite a few years here. So if I uh, control, press the control key and the down arrow, I see I have here uh, about 4,948 rows of data. And so one of the keys about um, pivot tables that you want to know pretty much uh, first off is that your data needs to have no blank rows. So any, if any of these rows were blank, it's not going to be a continuous set of data. Uh, so uh, you're going to have trouble. So we want to make sure you have no blank rows. Uh, we've kind of pretty much eliminated that possibility by checking. We have, you know, this many rows of data. If I keep scrolling down, I know I have no more data. So uh, just keep that in mind. And then what we can do here is all you have to do is click into the, the data. You don't even have to select your data. You just have to click into the data. And then you go to the insert tab, the tables group, and then uh, click on pivot table. Now I'm working in Excel 2016. So if you have 2013, 2010, and this is all in Windows, it should be pretty much, every, everything should be pretty much in the same place. The only difference might be the interface itself looks a little different. Now if you're in versions prior to 2010 for Windows or in a Mac version, I cannot vouch for that. Um, things are gonna probably look quite a bit different. But as far as going back to, um, as long as uh, version 2010 in Windows should be pretty much, um, you should be, be able to see and locate pretty much uh, everything the same way that I'm doing here in Excel 2016, just might look a little different. So back to the uh, pivot table here. So the create pivot table uh, wizard opens when you click on pivot table. And notice here that it has pre-selected our entire range of data. So that's what um, it's designed to do. And this is why it's important that none of your data set has any blank rows in it because it will only go down to the last used um, row of data. So that's why I pointed that out. So we'll go ahead, we'll, we'll use that default and we'll go with the default of placing the pivot table in a new worksheet. We'll click OK and we get a new worksheet here. And so this is actually your pivot table. There's nothing there yet because it's up to us to put the data where we want to put it. So we have this pivot table fields um, area shown. And if we click out of this pivot table area, you'll notice that will go away. So you have to be clicked into the pivot table area itself. If you are following along or you're going to go work on this later in your version of Excel, if you click into the pivot table and you don't see this pivot table fields, what you want to do is go to the analyze tab when you are clicked into the pivot table, these will the, the, the analyze tab and the design tab will not be visible when you're clicked out of the pivot table. You notice they went away. So you click into the pivot table, those will show up, go to the analyze tab and go to the show group on the very right hand side and make sure field list is in dark gray. So it's showing dark gray here, which means it's toggled on. You can actually un, un uh, select that and then it'll go away. So if you have a presentation or something and you're working in the pivot table and you don't want that taking up real estate on your spreadsheet, you can actually turn it off. But if you click it uh, and it turns dark gray, that will um, that will make this visible. So, all right. So now let's decide what we want to do here. We're, we're going to create a simple pivot, pivot table where we uh, find sales rep. And notice we've got four areas here that we can drag this into. We've got filters and we'll kind of I'll demonstrate that here in a minute but then we've got columns and rows which are pretty self-explanatory and then we have values and we're about to see what that means as well so I'm gonna take sales rep and notice I have this um, four directional arrow once that happens you can actually left click and then drag that I'm gonna drag it into the rows uh, area here so now we have a legitimate pivot table not a lot of meaningful stuff here but we do have a legitimate pivot table with data in it so we have our sales reps in the rows 
Now I'll take the amount, which are sales amounts, and I'm going to drag and drop that into the values area here. And so now we have some more meaningful data. We have uh, total sales amounts by sales rep. And it's pretty simple, but it is meaningful data. Um, so instead of us having to go back to our data and filter and then sum by those sales amounts, the pivot table makes it really easy for us. We can just drag and drop this stuff into its areas, different areas. So what I want to do real quick is I actually want to highlight those numbers. I'm going to uh, do control shift and four, and I'm going to change that over to a currency uh, format. And then I'm going to go to the home tab in the number section. I'm going to click on decrease decimal a couple of times because I don't need those zeros. So there you have it. You have your first pivot table uh, in less than uh, what, five minutes, six minutes. Um, so it's really kind of that easy. Now we're going to get into some other things. We're going to talk about columns and filters here real quick, kind of get, uh, get you exposed to that. So I have a, a month and year um, column in my data. So I want to drop the year into filters and note here that uh, it drops it up here in this little filter section and it's uh, pre um, selected for all but we have several years in our data so I can um, it shows this way when 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 it's uh, uh, in its initial state but I can check this box that says select multiple items and then it allows me to select just certain uh, years. If I want to select 2016, I can change that. And now we just have sales amounts for just 2016 only. And I can filter that. I can select multiple years. I can select everything except 2017. And I get uh, 9, 9.687 million in sales that ex excludes 2017, goes uh, 2012 through 2016. So you can see the meaning there. Um, also, I can actually drop in more um, data into that same uh, area, and I'm going to drop month under year. And so now I have both a year filter, and I also have a month filter. And I'm going to check this box again so I can deselect or select just certain months. So um, let's say I want to look at January, but I want to look at January just for 2017. I can um, I can change both of those filters. So now what I'm looking at here is sales just for January 2017. Maybe I want to compare that to 2016. I'll deselect 2017 and select 2016 January, and we have a different view of the data. So basically, it allows you to kind of filter on multiple uh, data points from your data very very quickly and get a quick at a glance look at that so let's look at bringing in some columns so uh, we've got filters we've got rows and we've got values what if we wanted to look at this by territory so we can drag territory into our columns and note here that our uh, four different territories are now set as columns so what it's going to do is it's going to filter down the, the sales data not just by sales rep, but now it's going to give us that broken down into different territories. So James B has sales in both Delaware and Maryland, whereas before we just saw the grand total. So another something we can do is we can actually um, we can reconfigure this to have um, our um, territory as rows and our uh, sales rep as columns. So all we've got to do is switch these. I'm going to drag territory to rows and uh, before I do that you can see here uh, something kind of cool too is this is another way you can view it so you've got your um, you've got territory and sales rep for the rows and you can actually um, collapse these so what you basically get is the same view we initially had which it was just totals by sales rep but now that we have territory underneath sales rep, it's rolling that up. So if we wanted to expand James B, we can see, oh, he's got sales in Delaware and Maryland. His total is 2.7 million, but here's how it's broken down. You can see that and expand that out if you want, or you can collapse that and you can have it that way. So that's a really cool feature of uh, pivot tables as well. Very, very cool. Uh, but if I wanted to take sales rep and put it over in the columns, I can look at it this way as well. I can look at um, 
just the th uh, the four different uh, territories and then say, okay, um, here's my totals. Here's what Brandon did. We had uh, in New Jersey, we had uh, four different sales reps working there and that have um, sales totals. So uh, you've already seen several ways to uh, break this down, filter the data and visualize it in different different ways. So I'm going to actually put sales rep back over here in uh, rows. Actually, I want to show you something here. So if I put row or sales reps underneath territory, now it makes territory the primary row and I can collapse these and I will have everything uh, broken down just by territory. But if I want to expand this out like New Jersey, I can see that, oh, we've got those sales in that territory across four different sales reps. So just another way to view the data. Um, another thing I wanted to also show you was how to change these uh, values. There's a way to uh, change the value field settings. So what I want to do, let me do this first. I can, uh, I'm going to take this pivot table. I'm going to select that entire thing if I can. Control C and then Control V. So I've got another pivot table here. Uh, but what I can do here is I can kind of change a few things. I can go um, here. I can change that setup to where it's by um, sales rep instead of by territory. And then we can look at it both ways uh, in either one of these, which is kind of cool. So um, let's say, yeah, so let's say I wanted to change this um, value field setting. I can um, click this down arrow over here on sum of amount. And then I can actually click on that um, value field settings and it'll bring up this dialog box and it allows you to set um, different um, different ways that you can summarize these value fields. So let's, uh, let's select count. So if I select count, I click OK, pardon me. Uh, what this is, and this doesn't sh show this this shouldn't be dollar amount so i'm going to change that i'm going to change that to just a number and i'm going to remove those decimal places since this is now the count of amount what this is telling us is the number of sales so if you wanted to kind of get a different view that's another little piece of flexibility that uh, pivot tables gives you i can now basically uh, tell the values to be the count of sales so brandon has over you know 1700 sales across all those years of data um, we know that um, we could actually let me copy this this is really cool stuff uh, I know I'm going really fast but if I wanted to change this back here I can go in this pivot table and I can change that back to sum so we can compare and so what I've got here let me change that back to currency and so what this means here is that Brandon has uh, over 1,700 uh, total sales. That's how many sales he had, and they amount in $3.4 million. George C. may have come along um, just lately. He has a total number of 135 sales amounting in 261000 almost $262,000. So that's uh, some more flexibility that pivot tables offer you. Uh, there's so much more you can do with pivot tables. This was just kind of a scratching the surface, kind of a quick, uh, not too deep dive, but just kind of quick introduction. But also I wanted to get deep enough that I could show you the possibilities and kind of get you started in the direction that you can come in here and you can start playing uh, with pivot tables yourself and see what they're really capable of. So I hope that helps. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.